Hello and welcome to my fourth tutorial offering mathematical support to Open University students studying the module TM111 Introduction to Computing and Information Technology and today we're going to be looking at dealing with large numbers and in particular large numbers that involve the number 10. In our everyday life we meet a lot of this. We might buy, when we go shopping, we might buy things in kilograms, a kilogram meaning a thousand grams. Whenever we travel a distance, we might travel a certain number of kilometers, a thousand meters. And if we have power associated with, say, heat, like an electric fire, we might talk about that in terms of kilowatts, a thousand watts. Notice we're using the little letter K, the lowercase letter K, as shorthand for a thousand. So a thousand grams, we simply write it as a kg. A thousand meters, we write it as a km. And a thousand watts, we write as kw. So we use the little letter K, the lowercase le letter K, to represent kilo. Now, as technologies, as we keep saying, we've got to be comfortable dealing with large and small numbers. And what we're going to start doing now is to increase that kilo, we're going to increase it by multiplying it by another thousand. And this is a technique which is called basically engineering notation. It's a way in which we can increase our numbers up a scale, up a scale of increasing size. So what do we get when we multiply a kilo by a thousand? Now a kilo is a thousand by itself, so a thousand times a thousand means we get an answer of a million, one followed by six zeros. Now we call it a million uh, and we can abbreviate this to the letter M but this time we use the capital letter M and this stands for mega which means big or very large if you like and we can write a million as simply 1M just as sort of shorthand notation a little bit of brevity. Now what happens if we multiply our mega our letter M what happens if we multiply that by a thousand well we're going to get a thousand times a million and that will give me one followed by nine zeros. Now we call this a billion for historical reasons um, but we don't use a billion in technology. We call this a giga meaning giant. So we can abbreviate one followed by nine zeros we can abbreviate that to simply writing it as one G. One giga means basically one followed by nine zeros. Now we are beginning to get large numbers and we're beginning to get a lot of zeros, perhaps too many of them. And this is, looks very ugly on the page. Uh, it takes up a lot of space. But also as you sort of try to write it down, you might make mistakes uh, in writing these sorts of numbers by missing off the odd zero or so, or so. So basically we're going to be looking at a shorthand notation using what we call the powers of 10 to represent all of those zeros. So let's go back to the basics first of all. Let's look at what basically a thousand represents. A thousand is basically 10 times 10 times 10. Basically it's 10 multiplied by itself three times. And we can simply abbreviate that representation of a thousand by saying, look, we're going to multiply 10 by itself three times. And we use the notation of 10 to the power of three. That little three in the air means that we're going to multiply 10 by itself three times. We say 10 to the power of three. So basically a kilo, remember, is a thousand. If I multiply a kilo by another thousand, that gave me a million. One followed by six zeros, which is basically 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. 10 multiplied by itself six times. So I can write this as 10 to the power of 6, representing 10 multiplied by itself six times. Now this sort of notation we're going to be meeting uh, once or twice on this module, and let's get the notation right first of all. The main number there, 10, we call that the base. And the little six in the air, the, the little power term that we've been using, we can call it the power or the exponent or the index. It doesn't really matter, although the power is more commonly used, uh, but you might find in other writings the word index used or the word exponent used. They're all basically the same way of expressing the same thing. 
So we'll be saying a number raised to the power of, but you can also say it has an exponent of as well. So let's look at our scale. We've been looking at a kilo, which we've just seen is 10 times 10 times 10, which we can abbreviate to 10 to the power of 3. But let's just work backwards a little bit. Let's look at 100. 100 is just 10 times 10. Well, that's 10 to the power of 2. And 10 by itself is just simply 10 to the power of 1. We're just multiplying it by itself, aren't we? Just 10 to the power of 1. So we've gone 3, 2, 1 in our exponents. So can we have something like 10 to the power of 0? Well, yes, we can. And there's a convention. Basically, any number, not just 10, but any number raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. Now, it does beg the question, what happens if you go below 0? Take another 1 off that, so we get minus 1. Can we have minus powers? Yes, we can, but we'll make that the subject of another video. So, basically, can you see the pattern? The pattern is basically looking at the number with how many zeros there are. So, a thousand has three zeros, and we write that as 10 to the power of 3. A million has six zeros, and so we can write that as 10 to the power of 6. So, any large number, such as a giga, can always be written as 10 to the power of count the number of zeros. And that will that'll allow me to express my large number in a more simplistic way. So let's go back to my uh, billion, or basically we call it a giga, and let's have a look how this, that was represented. Remember it was one followed by nine zeros. Now I've added a little decimal point on the end, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the decimal point one place to the left. And every time I do that, I'm going to multiply it by 10 to the power of how many times I've moved the decimal point. Well, I start off, I haven't moved it at all, so therefore it's 10 to the power of 0. Now I move it one decimal place, so therefore it's going to be 10 to the power of 1. I move it another, 10 to the power of 2, all the way down until I end up with 1, with a decimal point after it, followed by all those zeros, times 10 to the power of 9. Basically I've moved it, the decimal point, 9 places. Now this is a very important concept in technology. Every time we move the decimal point to the left, we add 1, to the power of 10 okay and we left with a single number in this case it's a one and we call that a single significant figure and the decimal point that follows it is important as well now I can apply this to any number so let's consider a number like 2,456,390 notice the decimal point on the end and I can move that decimal point one two three places four, five, six places, so it appears between the two, which is my first whole number, we call that a single significant figure, a decimal point followed by some decimal places, times 10 to the power of 6. This is the number of times we move those decimal places. We call this scientific notation. How big can we get? Well, my numbers are increasing in powers of 10. We've gone as far as 10 to the power of 9, but I can keep going with these multiplying by uh, 1,000 each time. So I can go up to 10 to the 12, 10 to the 15, 10 to the 18. And we go from a giga to a terra. Terra means monster. Then peta and exa. So we get very, very big numbers. And we might meet some of these on the module. The recordings and some more help for uh, mathematical support of power to the power of 10 and scientific notation can be found on my website, whose URL is there. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and there'll be some more to follow.